biology is a big word. And you're probably thinking like, no, it's really, it's seven letters. Okay, yes, but the field of biology is huge. If we actually take the word biology, bio means life and ology means study of. So biology literally means the study of life, the study of everything alive. Guys, think about it. We're talking from bacteria to, to humans, to tissues, to ecosystems, to the world. That is huge. That's, it's so much. And so kind of what we do in biology is we break up biology into different levels. And I call them the organization levels, but it's just, it's just levels. So let me just go ahead and give you a list of these levels. And you might be like, oh, okay. Yeah, this sounds familiar. So in this course, we're going to be exploring five different levels, but a lot more exist. You may be familiar with things like molecules, atoms, uh, DNA, cells, those are biology levels. They're very small levels, like literally small, microscopic levels. But in environmental biology, we're going to explore the bigger levels. What do What is included in our environment? Now, while atoms and cells are really important to the environment, I mean, when we talk about climate change, we're not like, how does climate change affect the number of hydrogen atoms? Like, we, we don't do that. We're like, oh, how does climate change impact the extinction of mankind? So I'm going to give you this list, but we're going to talk about each of them individually. So the largest level that exists is the biosphere. Like, so Earth, pretty large level. From there, we go to ecosystem, to community, to population, and then organism. And if you look at this image, there's things smaller than organism. There's things like tissues, cells, molecules. We're not really going to explore that, though. If y'all take a different biology course, depending on which one you're taking, you'll probably learn more about those levels. So let's dive in um, to some of the levels and kind of how they tie to the environment. So the biosphere, there's that root bio again, life, the life sphere. This is everywhere on earth that supports life. So biologists don't really study like earth's core. As far as we know, there's no life down there. So biologists at this level are going to be exploring issues that impact the earth. Now in environmental biology, that's a lot, right? Climate change, ocean acidification, air pollution. Even if, for example, air pollution isn't impacting the entire world, it's affecting a large enough part of it that we're going to call it biosphere. In our class, the class that you're taking this semester, we're going to be exploring a lot of issues that affect the biosphere. And scientists who study this can tell you about Earth's processes, but no, they can't tell you the you know flying velocity of a swallow. Like they don't know that kind of information. So biosphere is kind of the biggest level. This one's probably the one that makes the most sense. So let's to go to the next level down and spend a little bit more time on this level. So an ecosystem. You have probably heard the term ecosystem before. You have probably used the term ecosystem before. But let's talk about what an ecosystem actually is and what it actually entails. So ecosystems have two major components. It's the collection of organisms, so that biotic, bio, we'll talk about biotic here in a sec second. So the living stuff and the interaction with the environment. Now, when we say that interaction with the environment, what we mean is the stuff that's non-living. So you have the organisms, they're alive, and you have the environment, snow, nutrients, sunlight, that's not living. So you have these two major components. Maybe you remember, maybe in grade school, you may have learned about biomes. Um, so that's what I mean by environments, like these different biomes or three different pictures you see here. We'll explore more soon. Now to get a little bit more sciencey, we can break down that definition into two different factors. There's biotic factors. Bio means living. This is going to be the bacteria. This is going to be these trees you see in here. This is going to be this moss that you're seeing. Um, there's probably tons of insects in here. Um, here there might be, you know, a snowshoe hare, so a rabbit that's kind of hiding in here. So biotic things is everything living. 
in that environment. It can be something we see. It's the polar bear we see. It can be something microscopic, like the bacteria that lives on the fur of the polar bear. So that's the living part. The non-living part are called abiotic factors. That A, in other words, not just in this word, means without. So abiotic means without life. So abiotic factors are the non-living things. This is the environment, but they're crucial for life to exist. So let's use this middle picture. We have water here. Water is an abiotic factor. And someone might be like, ah, biology, the study of life. I don't need non-living things. Oh, hell no, right? We need water. Water is non-living, but it is essential for life. So biologists not only become experts on different fields of living things, but they also have to understand how non-living things impact us. You know, we have this tropical rainforest in this middle picture, tons of water. You see lots of life in this picture. But here we have a desert on the left, very little water, very little precipitation, and there's still life. And so scientists at the ecosystem level are studying how do changes in our environment impact the organisms that live there? How does um, the little precipitation this desert gets, how does that precipitation impact plant life? With um, this area, we have temperature. Temperature is not living. How does organisms adapt to these cold climates? How do they stay warm enough? So temperature, water, I have more examples here, shelter, nutrients, sunlight. It's really easy to be like, oh, organisms, living things, animals. And it's true. But plants, fungi, bacteria, they need things too. So how much sunlight is available in an environment can make a huge impact uh, to life in that area. So again, you've heard of ecosystems before, but just know that they're a collection of two different things. And as an environmental scientist, like we're curious, okay, how does the environment change and how is that going to impact the organisms living there? This is going to be smaller scale than a biosphere though. A biosphere, we're like, ah, oh, climate change. Ecosystem, we're like, hey, let's take a look um, at the Appalachian Mountains. Let's take a look at, you know, this National Wildlife Refuge in Maryland type thing. All right. Let's move to the next level down. And what you're going to notice is each level that we go down is getting less inclusive. So it's becoming narrower and narrower. So the next level down is a community. Now, we as humans use the word community to be like, ah, we have built a community. Community. You're in a community college. It means quite different <laughs> um, in the biological world. So someone who studies communities are looking at just the biotic components of an ecosystem. We don't care about the environment anymore. We just care about the interactions that exist between organisms. So let's use this picture for example. Here we got zebra and wildebeest. These are living, these are biotic things. We also have trees, we have grass. There's probably tons of bacteria and insects. So someone who studies communities is really looking at the interactions between those organisms. For example, maybe there's a lion that's in this grass somewhere, and we want to understand the impacts that lions have as a predator to the zebra population. So all we care about are just these two species in this relationship. Maybe we care about the zebras and wildebeest. They're both herbivores. They're both eating grass. Maybe we're trying to understand the competition that exists between zebras and wildebeest to get their food. Maybe we want to understand how grasses grow in the shade of a tree. So communities are looking at the interactions between organisms. Now with environmental biology, you might be like, well, I can get that with a like scientist, but what about like environmental science? Like why does this matter? And so it might matter because if we have lions go extinct, humans have overhunted them, what we might see is an increase in the zebra uh, 
population. Well, those zebras, there's a lot more of them. They're eating more grass. And because they're eating more grass, there's now less wildebeest and they're on the brink of extinction. So what humans have done, and we're going to be exploring this more this unit, is we change something in a community. But there's so many interactions between organisms that when we change that community, what happens is we start impacting other things, which may ultimately impact us. And we're going to be exploring that more later on. Let's go ahead down to the next level. And I actually just used this word, a population. We, again, similar to community, we use the word population. But the way we use population in our everyday life is actually not that far from the biological definition of a population. So a population in the biology world is a group of members of the same species. And I do also want to emphasize group. So we don't mean every single penguin in the world. When we say this population of penguins, we mean like this population of penguins. Like we, we mean just that. Just, we just mean just them. When we say this population of birds, we mean just that group of birds, and these are crows. This population of red maple trees. This population of emperor penguins. So a group of organisms. We as humans care a lot about this, particularly when you think about us gathering food. So whether we're hunting or farming, like we really care about populations. Are populations growing? Are they declining? Some organisms, if they're declining, that tells us a lot about what's happening in our environment. It'll tell us how clean our water is, how clean our air is. This is as an aside, you don't necessarily need to write notes on this, but you may have heard that a group of crows is called a murder, or a group of dolphins is a pod, or a group of fish is a school. Those words, murder, herd, pod, school, penguins, they're called a waddle. Trees, forest. Those words are words that describe a population. When you say, oh, there's a murder of crows, that is a population of crows. So again, on the test, I'm not going to be like, ah, what is a population of crows called? It's more of like, that's really cool. These are words I've heard before, and that's exactly what they're describing. They're describing populations. All right, we got one last level, and that is the organism level. And I have a hodgepodge of pictures on this. So when we're talking about an organism, this one's a little bit weird to describe because what we're talking about is just that organism, that plant, that animal, bacteria, mushroom, etc. We're talking about that organism. And we're typically talking about the physiology. Um, and I'll actually spell that out for you. Granted, I will warn you, spelling on the screen is really bad. So we're typically talking about the physiology of an organism, what it is. So let's start with the cheetah. So if I am a scientist studying the organism level, I would be interested in how do the cheetah's leg muscles enable it to run so fast? How does the Venus flytrap know there's a fly in it? How are humans able to eat 16 hot dogs in a minute? <laughs> These are the kinds of questions scientists are asking. They're trying to understand how that organism works. Now that last one I said, how do humans eat 16 hot dogs in a moment? You might be thinking, oh, well, you said humans, that's a population. But it doesn't matter if I'm talking about one human or many humans. What I'm talking about is how does a human work? How does a Venus flytrap work. So maybe a way to remember this organism level is answering the question, how does an organism work? It doesn't matter if this is Bob the cheetah versus Jill the cheetah. It's just, I just want to know about a cheetah. Now at the environmental level, and we'll explore this not too much, but a little bit in this class, if there is a pesticide that's in the environment, and it's killing bees. We, yes, it's killing a lot of bees, but we want to understand how is that pesticide killing the bee? Like, how is the bee dying? So we will explore, especially when it comes to pollution. Pollution, a lot of times you look at the organism level. You want to understand how that pollution is impacting those organisms. So again, there are more levels that exist in biology 
But that's all we're going to touch on because that's all, I guess, environmental biology and environmental science really focuses on. Yes, there's other levels, but we are going to look more at the biosphere, the ecosystem, communities, populations, individual organisms, and we're going to explore how the environment and how humans have changed our environment and how it impacts each of those different levels in very different ways.